Don't read ahead of me. I'm going somewhere with this. I want to help you out, okay? Keep your conscience clear. That's like standing fast in that liberty wherewith Christ has set you free. That's our job. Our job is to keep our conscience clear. Now, some people don't even know they got a conscience. And that's the little thing in there that condemns you if you don't do what you're supposed to do when you're supposed to do it. When you know you're supposed to do it and you don't do it, you have programmed your conscience, and therefore it'll condemn you if you don't do it. Did you just hear what I said? Yes, I think I'll take my coat off. It's getting hot in here. Now, I want to help you here a little bit, but I want you to pay attention to me. Mrs. James says that uh, I could borrow her stick if I needed it. Right. <laughs> appreciate, I appreciate that. Put a lot of love on it now. <laughs> I want to say that again. Our conscience will bother us. See, there are certain things that are absolute. If you program your conscious, conscious, no, conscious, that ain't the way you pronounce it. Conscience, is that it? Got it. If you, if you program your conscience right or wrong, however you have programmed it, if you don't do what it says, you're going to be under guilt, condemnation, and you're going to live in torment. A lot of people have programmed their conscience wrongly and they're trying to do something that god never intended you to do but you have programmed or other people have programmed your conscience that this is really the right thing to do but it's not but you believe it is and your conscience has put it down as true and you don't do it your conscience will bother you and condemn you Hello, are you out there? That's just the way it works. If you put your finger in the door, how many ever had their finger caught in the door of a car? Look at the hands. I don't care how holy you may be. It going to hurt. It going to hurt. Now, I want you to realize and put it down. Your conscience can work for you or against you. And this is why we need our minds renewed to make sure that we program our conscience with truth. If you have programmed your conscience with a bunch of lies and you're trying to keep those lies and you don't keep those lies, you're condemned. I got an example here. I don't know if I want to use it tonight, but it's a good example. Well, let me change it. Let's just say that you were taught that if you didn't eat two eggs a day, you were a bad boy. And so you miss a day of not eating two eggs, and your conscience con convicts you and condemns you for not eating those two eggs because you have programmed it that the only way you can be a good boy is to eat two eggs every day. And if you miss those, eating those two eggs now, your conscience says you're a bad boy. Th that makes sense? Just a little bit. I'm just using that as an example. Let me put it down. Maybe you can understand it. This is my son right here. You see him right here? He's eight years old. You're a bad boy. You didn't do what your dad told you to do. And you'll never amount to anything. I'm sick and tired of you disobeying me. You're a bad boy. His conscience is registered with him as being a bad boy. And every time he doesn't do what tell, everybody tells him what to do, 
he feels like he's a bad boy. His conscience condemns him, and he feels guilty, and he's tormented by it. Now, think in your own life, things that you believe that is a lie, but it's binding you. It's making you feel that you're not a child of God, or you're not what you should be. This is where low self-esteem comes in. People that feel low self-esteem. You're too fat. You're too skinny. You're too tall. You're not tall enough. Besides that, you're ugly. Well, you've programmed your mind. And every time somebody says something, they're really not talking to you, but you perceive it that they're talking to you, that voice of the conscience says, you're no good. All right, I'm, I'm working at this. Anybody got a better definition? Help me out. <laughs> And you've got to block all that out. God says you are accepted and to be loved. The devil says you're not. And if you believe what the devil says, then you're counseling out what God says, and, you're gonna, and your conscience has been programmed that you're no good, you never amount to anything, and you'll act that out in your life until you die. That's why our minds have to be renewed. What do you mean by renewing our mind? Getting all of that garbage out that uncles and aunts and, and neighbors and people have said negative to you to make you feel like you're a worm in the cabbage patch and you're not a worm in the cabbage patch, but you are a saint of God and it's so hard to cross over to the victory side because of all of the negatives that have been poured into our minds and our hearts and we believe that garbage instead of the truth of God's word. quiet in here but am i not speaking truth so what do we do we go to drink we go to drugs we go to this we go to that because somehow it's been related to us that we're no good if we're no good we might as well have a beer we might as well have a a shot or two and and and, and people are dying every day over drugs and they're dying every day uh, over drinking and 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 driving automobiles and killing people if they just come and realize what the Lord has done. God makes no trash. Yes, we all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. I was talking to a young, not a young lady, but she, I would say she's 50 years old. That's pretty young for me. She says, I, 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 just, I just teach the King James. I said, well, that's good. I, I can preach from the King James. I preached from it for years, and I love it. I praise God for King James. You know, it's getting hot in here. <sighs> yes, sir. King James. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Yeah, yeah. I, that's what it says. I, it's, it, I, I, can tell you, I can tell you exactly where you can find it, too. Romans 3.23. All have sinned and come short of God. But the very next verse, put it on the board for me, will you? Romans 3.24. The very next verse says, Since all have sinned and call, are falling short of the honor and the glory which God bestowed and receives, verse 24, all are justified and made upright in the right standing with God freely and graciously by His grace, His unmerited favor and mercy through the redemption which is provided in Christ Jesus. Now, which one do you believe now? If you're thinking on verse 323, day and night, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. There's none in here that's righteous. You're all going to go to hell and you know it. You need to go to hell. That's what you need to do. I'm the only person that shouldn't. <laughs> if you hear that day in and day out and you've been programmed with that and somebody comes along, but you know what the Lord has done? I know what Adam's done. That's been preached. To me for years. I preached it myself as an evangelist, but you don't preach that to the saints of God. You preach what the Lord has done. He has made all of us righteous and holy and sanctified. And when we get down, down into the fiber of our being, we will act it out. 
because the righteousness of God produces the fruit of righteousness. I guarantee you, if you feel like you're a nobody, somebody tell me how you feel. Come up here and testify. Not everybody one time now. Oh, man, I hurt. I, huh? Why? T t t t t why? It's that song, Gloom, Despair, and Agony on Me. Oh. Ah. <coughs> Oh, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Somebody save me. <laughs> Has anybody ever heard about the cross? Crossing over from darkness through the cross? Everything in the past is gone. If anybody be in Christ Jesus, he is a new creation. Old things have been done away with. Behold, all things have become new. And now we're saints of God. Heirs of God. Co-heirs with Jesus Christ. This is so important. That we quit grieving the Holy Spirit. Because he has worked with every one of us. He wants us to know what the Lord has done. I'm getting back to this statement. I want you to look at that. Through the re redemption, which means redemption what? Redeemed back. Redeemed means You've been bought with a price. You've been brought back to God. Everything Adam did is canceled out. The old creation has been crucified with Christ. You, the old you, have been crucified with Christ. You're a brand new person over here. Yet you still have this same body. It has certain uh, tendencies and, and, and desires. And I'm still trying to overcome cookies. But I'm still righteous. Hello? I said, Susan, I got to lose weight. You know, I, I tried to lose weight in the last year and I gained 20 pounds. And she said, Huh? Good thing you tried to lose weight. Yeah, but what, what, how come I gained 20 pounds? Hey, that's right. I didn't think about that. That's pretty good. Susan's going down there. She's looking for 44 now, 44 pants. In my waist, can you imagine? Do I look like I'm 44? <laughs> Who said 84? <laughs> 44! And I'm trying not to gain weight. And I'm gaining weight. I look at food and gain weight. I dream about food and I gain weight. But I'm not worried about it. I'm 82, and I'll tell you what, if I go out, I'll probably go out with a cookie in my mouth. That don't make no difference. I, I ain't worried about it. I'm trusting God with the whole things. He knows my heart. He knows I want to look like Clark Gable, Earl Flynn. I know I'm being funny. But that's all right. You're getting the message. I'll guarantee you some of us are going to go out just like we are with our body frame. You tried for 80 years to lose weight and you'll probably go out, you know, because, you know, these old bodies aren't redeemed. But you will get a redeemed body. And you eat all cookies you want and you won't gain no weight. I'm talking about really cookies. And heavenly cookies. The angels cook those cookies. Pound cake, about a pound. Justine, and uh, it'll be busy up here making those cakes for us all. 
Put all the butter and the milk you want in it, honey. Pop the lard to it. My grandmother used to cook with this lard. You get it in a big bucket. It was uh, the lard can. It was back to the. <clears throat> Put all that lard in those biscuits. Man. Sure was good, though. Sure was good. But, you know, we didn't gain weight back then because we worked. I tell Susan, you know, I'm studying more now. And that's why I'm gaining weight. So summertime I'll be coming. I'll be out on my tractor. Maybe I can lose a couple of pounds. Then come in and eat another pound of cookies. But you know what? That bothers my conscience. Do you know how I'm going to get delivered from, my, from that? Just quit eating the cookies. Because my conscience will tell me, Bob, you shouldn't eat all those cookies. I say, shut up. Don't tell me what to do. Well, go ahead and eat them. You're going to gain more weight. How many know what I'm talking about? You cannot fool your conscience. Your conscience is set up, and it's going to tell you the truth. And you'll be miserable until you obey your conscience. Hello? All right, let's go through this thing now real quick, like, <clears throat> are we ready? So, here we go. Look at, uh, put uh, 1 Timothy 1.19 up there. 1 Timothy 1.19, here we go. So, we're justified, we know that, we're children of God, okay. We have a conscience, and we got to know how and why that conscience acts like it does. Holding fast to the faith that, that's lean, that, that leaning on the entire human personality on God in absolute trust and confidence and having a good, clear conscience by rejecting and tr thrusting By rejecting and thrusting from them their conscience, some individuals have made shipwreck of their faith. Wow, but not keeping our conscience clear. So basically what I want us to see today is it's important to keep our conscience clear. When you know, let's just put it that you know you should come to church and be on time, and you're not, and your conscience knows it, then you're going to feel guilty. Anybody can identify with that? If I don't do what I'm supposed to do, my conscience will make me feel good. And you can't, you can't buy it off. You can't sell it off. You can't pay it off. That's just the way it works. So the only way to keep a clear conscience is obey what you know the Lord has told you to do. And if we don't obey what we, the Lord has told us to do, our conscience will be making us feel miserable. And after a while... Your conscience can get seared and hardened, and it's not working anymore. And now we're really in trouble. Now you're shipwrecked. So, I'm going to read this in the King James. Cling tightly to your faith in Christ and always keep your conscience clear. Put the King James up there. Holding fast and a good conscience, which... Some have put away concerning, concerning faith has made shipwreck a good conscience. Now, let's bring this thing down to where we live. Everybody look at me. Is your conscience clear? You don't have to try to convince me. Between you and God, ask yourself. Because if it ain't, that might be your problem. Why you don't have any joy. Why you're afraid to go to the throne of God. You don't have confidence and boldness to go to the throne of God because your conscience is condemning you. Are, you understand that? Yes. If you understand that, raise your hands. hands. And, and you can't get out of it. You can't. You just got, if you're going to clear your conscience. Now, thank God that we have the blood of Christ. Just as the blood of Christ cleanses us from all sin, 
We can appropriate the cleansing of the blood. How much more shall the blood of Jesus Christ cleanse our conscience from all dead works? Hebrew tells us that. So there's times you know about 1 John 1, 9. It you said, and, 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 and you know God is faithful and just to forgive you and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. And you accept that by faith. You receive that by faith. If your conscience is bothering you, Find out why it is bothering you, and then start doing what you know you should do, and then ask God to cleanse your conscience from all of that dead works. So many times we do things to impress God or to impress people, or that's all dead works. What we do, we should do because we love God. And I'm bringing our attention to conscience today. God is doing that for a reason because you're never going to have the full joy of the Lord and the power of the Holy Ghost operating in your life feel, feeling guilty all the time. How many has gone through that syndrome? It's miserable. We all have. If you think, if you think, dare to think, now you know many times what's wrong. If I know, if I know that I am to love my wife as Christ loved the church and I don't, my conscience is going to bother me and I'm going to feel miserable. If I know that I am to love God and, and to serve God and, and be obedient to God and I don't, my conscience is going to bother me. And the only way I ever have a clear conscience, number one, I have to get the blood to clear it. But if I go ahead and do the same thing over and over and over again, I'm going to defile my conscience again, and it's a dead end road. So we have to learn to be obedient to keep our conscience clear. And that's where the power of God is, being obedient to God. Our conscience does not bother us, and we can come boldly. And you'll read that in... We won't turn there right now. In first, uh, in first Peter chapter three, right in that chapter there. Now, in fact, um, it starts with verse seventeen. All right, let's go on. So we got to clear, keep our conscience clear. All right, the word conscience. Everybody, follow me. The word conscience is a New Testament term that describes the aspect of a human being that brings self-awareness. This awareness bears witness to our spirit about what is right or wrong. The dictionary states that the conscience is the moral and ethical awareness in one's conduct, combined with the urge to choose between right and wrong. Conscience works within your spirit. That's where God put it. The conscience is a God-given capacity to exercise self uh, critical uh, or self-examination. The conscience is not an outside voice speaking to you. It is an inner voice. Now, how, how many has ever heard their conscience? Let's see your hands. How many has never heard their conscience? How many didn't even know you had conscience? How many don't care? <laughs> All right. All right, the conscience often struggles because it must choose between right and wrong. Now think about the struggles you have in your life. Why are you struggling? It could be, and it could be other things. It could be that your conscience is telling you that you need to shape up and get some things right, and then your conscience won't bother you. Amen? All right. The conscience often struggles because it must choose between right and wrong. If we choose wrong, there will be a mental anguish and feeling of guilt. Now, I've experienced that many times. How many in here has experienced that many times? Yeah. Now, we're not, we've got to understand how we're made here now and, 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 and understand what God is trying to tell us. And how to keep a clean conscience. Because a lot of people are just miserable. Miserable. Because 
they're not doing what they know they should do, and they're doing some things they shouldn't do. So it cleared your conscience. You got to do what the Lord tells us to do. If you don't, your conscience will bother you. All right. The word conscience occurs 31 times in the New Testament. There are many types of consciousness found in the New Testament. I will just I will list I will list just a few. The natural conscience. Romans 2:15. Romans 2:15. They show that the essential requirement of the law are written in their hearts and are operating there with their con conscience, sense of right and wrong. Also bear witness and, and their moral decision, their argument of reason, their condemning or providing thoughts will accuse or perhaps detend and, ex and excuse them. Boy, I made a mess of that, didn't I? I'm, I'm, glad, you can, I'm, I'm glad you could read. <laughs> Somehow it's hard for me to see that up there. So even the natural man knows right and wrong because God has put it into them and their conscience will either condemn them or not condemn them. Because God has put into every individual right and wrong. That's talking about, and you'll find that over there in Romans 2.15. Now, the defiled conscience, <coughs> Titus 1.15. Titus 1.15. Maybe I'll do a little bit better on this one. To, be, to the pure in heart, and in conscience, all things are pure, but to the defile and corrupt and unbelieving, nothing is pure. Their very minds and consciousness are defiled and polluted. Woo! That's a goodie. Let that go through your computer. I'm just going to speak truth. We have people to come into the shield. Sometimes we have a victory march. <laughs> or, you know, we have a little thing like a da 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 da. You know, they would they would think, oh, that's unpure to do that in church. What's wrong, brother? Is what I'm doing is unpure, or what you got in your heart is unpure. Now, when I hug you, sisters, listen, I'm 82 years old. Don't worry. <laughs> I got a beautiful wife over here, and she takes care of all my needs. But I love God's people. As a shepherd, I love you. I'm your daddy. And I hug all my girls when they come home. I hug all my grandkids. They all piled up on top of Susan and me because they know we love them and we wrestle with them and we get a ribby dib dib with them. Now, I'm not going to get a ribby dib with you ladies, so don't worry. <laughs> but the kids, I'll ribby dib dib a little bit. Our heart is pure. We love God's people. But if somebody would come in here, they, they would... They don't come back. <laughs> and I don't be to be mean, but thank you, Jesus. Because <laughs> it'll just give you trouble after trouble. I'll tell you the truth. Unless they are converted and become as little children. You see these kids, they wrestle. They just, <laughs> they pure. Pure kids. Now there's a point at a time... Well, we might have to correct that behavior. But until then, let them enjoy themselves just a little bit. Don't, don't, don't make them a stiff Pharisee too quick in their life. 
give them a chance to know what liberty and freedom is. In this tape that we're going to show next time, I hope everybody will come and see this DVD on, what's it, oranges? Christmas oranges. Yeah, Susan's going to have an orange for everybody. I'm talking about a big orange. She wants to have an orange for everybody. I said, well, that's what you want to do. Just make sure I get a couple of them. <clears throat> the guy that run this orphanage, man, he was strict. And sometimes you have to, if it goes a little bit over, just like the boys were back there this morning with those straws or whatever they had, I called them down. And I said very gently, if you do that again, you're going to hell. You know that, don't you? <laughs> I said, boys, we can't do that, okay? And they, see, they knew that authority. They came under. They came under. But I said it in love. But this guy in the orphanage, it was something in him that was doing that and treating those kids like he did. But through it all, God got through to him. It's such a, I ain't going to tell you no more, but it is good to see how God works in a man and mellows him down. That's one thing when I read Apostle Paul's letters, when he first started, he was uh, that Pharisee, you know. If they don't believe, hang them. Burn them to the stake if they don't believe. But you see him tendered down as the Holy Spirit does that work in him. When I first started out as evangelist, man, I would, I would walk up and down the thing like this. And I tell you one thing, if this church don't straighten up, I can see it in the Spirit. Every one of you, even the pastor's going to hell. I tell you one thing, repent, repent, repent. I said repent. Do you hear me? It's time to repent. Judgment must start first start at the house of God. You need to come down here now and get them all under condemnation. Everybody down at the altar under condemnation. Oh, Lord, please help me, Lord. Help me. How many know what I'm talking about? Some of you, some of you do. Some of you don't. Well, maybe you haven't been... To, <clears throat> to that type of church. <laughs> I used to preach at a Pentecostal church. Man, I mean, the chairs would get up and come down. <laughs> you just bring fire down, man. Fire, fire. Yeah, I know how to do that. <laughs> but that ain't no way to do it. Let me tell you something. If the Holy Spirit don't change you inwardly, you can, you can discipline yourself outwardly, and you can just be so dignified. Got your hair all rolled up in buns. Don't have any lipstick on, no earrings. You just as holy as you can be. You got holes in your socks and holes in your pants. But other than that, yeah, I mean, listen, it, God works on the inside. And until God does that work in you, You'll just be as mean as any Pharisee. But I'm telling you, when you let God do that work in you, honey child, oh, you'll be loving and kind and merciful. You'll know what it is to not be loved. You'll know what it is to be mean and angry. But now the Lord has done a work, and the only thing you can say is, it was the Lord. People come to me, and I say, it's the Lord. I've had people come and write me letters. I got letters. Pastor Bob, your life convicted me. Your very life. Not what you said. Your very life. The way you handled yourself. The way you loved your wife. The way you act. The way you share Christ convicted me. And they gave their life to Christ. Just by my example, living epistles read by all men. And when God does that work in us, we, every one of us, and we are, many of you are living epistles, and men are beginning to read your life. <clears throat> and many of them are getting done conviction. But you learn to keep your conscience clear because they'll get defiled. All right, let's read this. To the pure in heart. 
and conscience. Notice, pure in heart and conscience. All things are pure. Many times people point the finger because that's what's in them. Are you listening? They're miserable as they kick the cat. How many have ever done that? Fuss at their wife? Or the wife fuss at the husband? Because something just is not right on the inside. And they're miserable, and their conscience is eating them alive instead of humbling themselves and receiving the grace of God to overcome those tendencies. By the way, that's in James chapter 4, verse 6. You will look it up. They lash out at those they love. They lash out at those they love. When I was under conviction, six years, heavy conviction, a godly woman, never argue, never fuss, fixed my meals, loved me. The goodness of that woman brought me to repentance. Romans chapter 2, verse 4. The, do, are, are you ignorant of this, not knowing that the goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance? What is repentance? Repentance is a change of mind. It's a change of heart. It, it's beginning to see how good and wonderful God is, how much he loves us. Grow in grace and knowledge. I've often wondered, why grace and knowledge? Why not, why not grace and character? Why not grace and... Uh, uh, ability. I, I know when two, thi two, two things are together, it, it means something. It means something. I remember I said that many truths come in what? Twos and threes. All right, I'll give you a three. Knowing this, that our old man has been crucified with Christ. Verse 11, no, that's, that's one principle. And the no, next principle is... Reckon yourself to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Christ Jesus our Lord. That's two principles. And the third principle is do not, do not yield to sin, for sin shall not have dominion over you. There's three things there that we must operate in by faith to come into the total victory of that before we activate the word of God through faith. All right, what's two principles? If I will confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, what's the result of that? Thy shall be saved. So all through the scriptures you'll see that. Now here we said grow in grace and knowledge. Knowledge of what God has done for us. Knowledge of, of how he is, how much love he is, that God is love. Let me tell you something. People are worried about this and that. Listen, God's going to take care of it all to the judgment. Y'all understand that? Judgment is mine, saith the Lord. Ain't nobody going to get off with nothing. God sees everything. But my goodness, let's pray that God's grace would work while they're still on the earth. Because the Bible says God gets no pleasure out of punishing or destroying the wicked. In Ezekiel, it tells us that. He gets no pleasure out of that. Got five more minutes. I'm going to let you go because I know you want to go home and take a nap. I can tell some of you. How many love me? Just a little bit. We won't finish this today, but take that home and read it. And I got to share this with you. This was on the, the, the funny, the, some of the funny uh, videos. How many of you watched the funny videos? This little kid must have been. This little girl was on the couch. I think she's two years old. And she's doing this. Look. Now, over here, there's a, there, there's a pillar. And she has a pillar that she's leaning back on. And there's a pillar over here. There's a little teeny dog that's sleeping on that pillar. And she's doing like this. She wakes back up, and the dog's over there asleep. 
Then she comes over, and this time she goes out, and she touches that dog's pillar. <laughs> Man, he showed his teeth like that. <laughs> that was so funny. Wasn't that funny? That wasn't funny? Okay. I thought it was funny anyway. I thought, well, you know, that's the way some folks are. You got your you lay, don't you touch my pillar. Because, I mean, there's nobody in here like that, but, you know, you probably, your grandpa was probably like that or somebody. <laughs> Not us, anyway. But that's human nature, you know. Now, let's bring this to a conclusion. If you do sin, God is faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. God does that as we do what? Confess to him that we have sinned, and God does the cleansing. We put faith in that. Same thing with your conscience. Here's what you do. Now, I'm going to, like, let's just say that, Lord, I, I, I know that I should have uh, uh, went to church this morning, but I slept in because I, I stayed up too late last night, and I just couldn't get my eyeballs open this morning, and my conscience just bothered me because I know nobody in here is like that, but it does me anyway. <sighs> Would you forgive me, Father, of that disobedience and cleanse my conscience? And I thank you that you said in your word, how much more will the blood of Jesus Christ cleanse my conscience? And I thank you now for the cleansing of my conscience. And, Lord, I do my best, and I ask you to help me not to defile my conscience anymore by disobedience. Everybody got that? All right, everybody say, Lord, Lord. I ask you to forgive me. And to forgive my con and cleanse my conscience with the precious blood of Christ. All this week, I know there were some things that I should have done. And there were some things I did. I ask you, Lord, it bothered my conscience. Would you now cleanse my conscience? from all of that dead works. And I thank you now. By faith, I receive the cleansing of my conscience. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Now, if it speaks up again, you say, shut up. The blood has cleansed me. Everybody got it? And you walk, keep your conscience clean. If you, need, if you never accepted Christ, I mean giving your life fully, not just speaking it, but with all your heart, you mean business for God. Because I'm going to say something. We're in the last days, and it wouldn't surprise any day for the Lord to return. And the Bible says that we want to make sure, in many ways, that our conscience will be clear that when he shows up, we will not be ashamed to face our Lord. Amen? So walk in the Spirit, and we will not fulfill the lust of the flesh if we do make the mistake, you know what to do. We've taught it here. Keep yourself clean, holy. Come out from among them and walk in the Spirit. And that's where the blessings are. Amen. 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 God bless you. If you need to come for prayer, come up and we'll be.